All right, welcome back to another exciting edition of Turd Fergavision version 2.0. So today's video is actually going to be on the photoelectric effect. And by photoelectric effect, what I'm referring to, let's take a look at this calculator. Now, my Casio FX115 has actually got a little panel that's right here. Most people say solar panel. That's a photovoltaic cell. So what is that little cell doing on my calculator? Chances are there's one on your calculator in front of you right now. So what is that calculator doing? Well, obviously, you can see my flashing light here. Obviously, this calculator is using electricity. So what's happening is this. The photons in the room, here comes my photon, is striking that screen. And when the photons hit that screen, it's producing a flow of electrons. So I've got a flow of electrons in this calculator. And that flow of electrons is where I'm getting this little flashing dot at right now on my screen. So what Einstein did was explain what's happening. How does this photon cause this electron to be ejected? And by the way, that is the sexy science word of the day, to eject the photon. All right, well, now that we've kind of looked at this, let's clear our ink off that calculator. I may actually need it as a calculator later. So here's our fancy definition for photoelectric effect. No, look, speaking of sexy science words of the day, there it comes again. The ejection of an electron from a surface of a metal or another material when light shines on it. So, so what's going on? How do we describe this? There's a very important word here. It's known as work function. And if you're trying to figure out what that is, that's actually my phi. That's what I'll call that in my Greek uh, language here. So every material has a phi, a work function. And it's kind of like, it's basically how hard, how well that atom's holding on to its electrons. Um, if you're trying to think of an example, it's, uh, it's really hard to do, but let's imagine if we've got two guys playing football. Yeah, hey, it's fall. Let's talk about football. So let's say one guy is, and don't take this personal, kids in band or whatever, but let's say we got the old skinny band guy sitting here, and here he is, and I'm like, he's sitting here like, this is my football. I love my football. But over here, you got Mr. I've been taking steroids since I was in second grade. Out here. Ah, ah, look at me. I'm like, no, uh, he, he's probably all angry looking. Uh, well, he's been taking all these roids. He's probably got a beard, but he's probably bald. So anyway, so he's like, oh, look at me. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm super dude. Ah. I have no idea what I'm doing at this point. That guy looks like an idiot. But anyway. And he holds on to the football, and that's a terrible-looking football. But anyway, it's pretty obvious. Work function, this is work function. Okay, this probably looks nothing like work function, but it is work function. Work function is how well, if this is an atom, it's how tightly it can hold on to that electron. It's how tightly that can hold on that electron. So what's happening is these photons are going to hit the atoms. Here comes in the photon. And here's the thing. It ought to be pretty... Which one? Uh, Mr. Classic, I'm going to call this guy Mr. String Bean. Mr. String Bean? Or Mr. I'm going to nickname him Roydo. So there's Mr. Roydo. Who's it going to be harder to get the football away from? Obviously, this guy, you're going to knock that football right out of his hands, whereas this guy, he's holding on. I'm not saying you couldn't knock the electron the the electron out or eject the electron out but it's going to take a lot of energy to eject that electron but that's cool because light has depending remember we've talked about this already depending on the wavelength of the light that's a terrible looking wave i'm going to raise that depending on the wavelength of the light that's going to determine your energy. So obviously, like if I've got two waves, there's A and B. A has more energy, or excuse me, A has less energy than B because it's inversely proportional. Because you can look at these small wavelengths, and these small wavelengths indicate there's going to be more energy in these. So anyway, that's where this comes down to. Every metal has, and let's just go ahead and do a problem because I'm probably doing terrible this video so far. But let's say here is a metal. 
that metal is going to have a work function. And I gave you a chart up here, just so you know what some are. Like, here's sodium, and here's aluminum, and so forth. I'm just going to make up one and say it has a work function of 3. Usually what happens in these problems now is somebody shines a light, and here comes a photon. Here comes a photon. And here comes my photon coming down. And let's just say that here's my electron. Now, this three electron volts that you've seen me draw here, this is, that is how much energy, how much energy it takes to eject an electron. So here's the thing, this light wave, this light wave has got to have at least three electron volts of energy or nothing happens, as in your calculator will have a blank screen, unless you have a battery in there backing you up. So the way these problems work, they usually give you like a wavelength here. So let's get a wavelength. Uh, wavelength is equal to, I don't know, give me an idea. Let's go with mm, 500 nanometers. Actually, hopefully that's got enough energy to like knock this thing out. I'm going to do a quick check on my own real quick just to see if I'm right. Mm, ouch. Uh, let's retract that. I want to take it down to 400 nanometers. I want to get as much energy as I can out of this thing. So... Yes, this one I like. So we've got a photon of wavelength, 400 nanometers, and all I'm asking you to do is find the energy of that photon. Wait a minute, Mr. Cole, didn't you already make a video on this? Yeah, we did. If you want to find the energy associated with that photon, all I need to do is E equals HF. And then, but here's the thing, I did not give you F. H is easy, I did not give you F. Well, I know that C is equal to lambda F. Well, I hope you excuse me for a second, but I'm going to do some algebra here. Uh, I do not have a desire to have to do more work than necessary, so I'm going to do something. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by lambda. Cancels that. So C is lambda F. We got this. And now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to substitute that N for that F. So I want you to look at something. E is equal to H, and in place of F, I'm going to write C over lambda. Why would you do that? Uh, so that I only have to work this problem once. I don't feel like working two problems here. So H is Planck's constant, 6.63, times 10 to the negative 34. C is speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. Draw my line over lambda. Dun, dun, dun. My lambda is 400 nanometers. Now, same thing still goes. 400 nanometers is 400 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And now let's plug this in a calculator, shall we? So, see if I can pull that Casio back up here. Hey, buddy, how have you been? Long time no see. So, it looks like we've got 6.63, 10 to the negative 34 and while we got that times 3, 10 to the 8 over 400, 10 to the negative 9 equals 4.97 times 10 to the negative 19. So I'm going to write that down. 4.97 times 10 to the negative 19, and this would be joules. There's just one problem. This is in electron volts. Hey, ain't no big deal. That was the last video. We can convert this. So I'm going to take a second times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per 1 EV, and I'm going to convert that. So let's take a second. The 10 to the negative 19s, they can go away. So all we got to do is 4.9797 divided by 1.6. And we've got 3.1. I cut that close. And I'll explain why. 
This is how much energy my photon has. Now I'm going to redraw that picture. So here is my piece of metal. So there's my metal. And here is my electron. And I said that that electron has a phi of 3. Now that's basically how tightly this, electro this electron is being held on to. And here comes the photon. Whee! And that photon had a wavelength of 400. And you just found it has an energy of 3.1 electron volts. So what's going to happen? Well, this electron has got enough energy, or excuse me, this photon's got enough energy that it's actually going to basically imagine rip this electron out. And this is what we'll call eject. It's going to eject that electron from the metal. And what we're actually going to do is that we're going to actually have electricity here. Now, the most common question, there's a formula for this, but I rarely write it. What is the kinetic energy of that electron that gets emitted? Well, take a look. The light had 3.1 electron volts. The metal was holding on with 3 electron volts, which means there's going to be 0.1 electron volts left over. And so this would be my grand magic answer to this. So usually they'll say, will it eject? And my answer is, yes, it will eject. Uh, another common question, like this is a very, very common question, is to give you three different metals. Metal one, metal two, metal three. And it will tell you like the first metal has a phi of two electron volts. And the next one has a phi of three electron volts. And then the next one has a work function of four electron volts. And it says you shine a light on each one of these. And here comes my light. And it'll say, which metal will eject? Well, once again, you just need to find your energy. So like our last one was 3.1, which means what's going to happen? This guy, you're going to eject, and you're going to have 1.1 EVs of kinetic energy. This guy here, yep, we just did it. You're going to eject him, and you're going to have 0.1 electron volts of kinetic energy. What about this electron? Unfortunately, he's not going anywhere because this metal is holding on with four electron volts of energy. Therefore, in other words, the electrostatic forces are too great. And so this guy, nope, nothing's going to happen here. That's a common question. Now, I'm 12 minutes in this video. I don't really have the desire to go longer. But I'll go and tell you, the other common question is this, and this is one you can already do. You'll see a question, and it says that a, something has an EV of 5.2 electron volts. That's your work function. And then the question will say, you'll come back and ask, what wavelength should this light have in order to eject it? All you're going to do is, if that's, all you're going to do is be like, all right, well, let's just do... In other words, this is your E in E equals HF. You need to change that to joules. Now, if you're in physics class watching this video, you can actually cheat on this. Because here's something cool in the world of physics. So, if you're in chemistry, stop watching. If you're taking physics, this is actually kind of neat. Because, you remember a second ago, I did this. E equals HF. Don't tell nobody. This will be our secret for people in physics. And I solve this for F. This comes in very handy, actually. E equals H C over lambda. Well, if you want to see something cool, you're going to notice something. Both of those are a constant. Ooh. Which means, oh, watch this equation. E equals, you ready for this? 1240 EVs, check that equation out. The neat thing about this equation, look, it's already in EVs because that HC is a constant, 1240. Well, it's going to put my answer in and actually be, good grief, what would the unit for this be? It would be EVs per nanometer is what that is 1240 evs per nanometer and what's neat about this go ahead 
Try me out. Give me a light. Uh, let's see. A red photon? Cool. A red photon? What do you want? Oh, I like it. 600 nanometers. How much energy does it have? Easy. Energy would be equal to 12, oops, to 1240 per 600. And look at this. Because this is already in nanometers, all I got to do is 1240 divided by 600. Mm, this is what we do in physics. Boom. 2.06. And what's neat about this is look at what my answer is already in. EVs. Oh, my goodness. Ah, you got to love getting to throw the physics around a little bit. So... Anyway, I hope you've had good luck, and I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas. Oh, wait, it's October. Hey, that's okay. I'll still wish you one. So, later, taters. Bye.